Hello, everybody. Byron here. Welcome to episode eight of the Who the Hell Asked Gaming Podcast Show. I am your host, Byron, alongside my co-host, the King of Stonks, Slade. How are you doing <laughs> hey, today? What's going on, everybody? How are you doing today? How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I mean, it's been a hell of a week. <laughs> oh, um, haven't really got much sleep due to the game top GameStop situation, but uh, we'll go over that a bit later. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. For me, it's been a sane week, but let's. Let's get started with a couple of things that happened uh, literally the day before we recorded our last episode, the Nintendo franchise tier list. So, there was a controversy around Xbox Live Gold. So, at first, Microsoft were planning to increase the price of Xbox Live Gold. Now, for those who don't know, Xbox Live Gold is basically the PlayStation Plus for Microsoft consoles. And so you would pay $59.99 for one year. So I believe that's about the same price as PlayStation Plus. So, but they were planning to increase the price by 200%, which is fucking nuts. Yeah, that's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Like, as soon as I saw that, like, huge, like, spike increase in price, I'm like, are they adding new services or something? Are they, like, adding more dedicated servers? Like, what are they doing to improve the product to uh, justify that kind of price increase? And honestly, nothing. They aren't doing anything to really justify that price increase. And it's weird because towards the beginning of the year, we were speculating that you know, the Xbox Live Gold and the uh, Game Pass. Game Pass was going to absorb Xbox Live Gold yeah. to some extent mm -hmm. due to how popular and how well Game Pass has been doing for Xbox, right? Yeah, and absolutely. It's kind of funny how we were talking about, oh, these super consumer-friendly things Microsoft has been doing to then just do a complete 180 and pivot to something really scummy like this. Yeah, that's a, that's absolutely terrible that that happened. But the good news is, apparently, they have since run it. They have since taken back that message. Yes, and the pricing model is going to continue to be as it was. Is that yeah, correct? yeah, yeah. So originally, this new pricing model would be ten ninety nine for a month, three uh twenty nine ninety nine for three months, and fifty nine ninety nine. For six months, because a while back, uh, I believe Microsoft announced that they would be stopping uh, purchases of one-year subscriptions, which had had people, which was part of the reason why speculation started that oh, they're going to combine Game Pass and Live Gold into one service. But obviously, with this potentially, they no, that was a no. However, as you can see on screen, there are price slashes there are slashes because update we messed up today and you were right to let us know connecting and playing with your friends is a vital part of gaming and we failed to meet the expectations as a result we have decided to not change xbox live gold pricing we are turning this into a moment of, of opportunity to bring Xbox Live more in line with how we see the players at the center of their service. And here's a big one. For free-to-play games, you will no longer need an Xbox Live Gold membership to play those games on Xbox. We are, wor we are working hard to deliver this change as soon as possible in the coming months. Bombshell right there. Oh, yeah. And I think it's a great thing that the, the backlash took place and they immediately responded to it. Because what that tells me is that companies like this tend to run away with these really cons anti-consumer practices and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it's good to see that when called out, these companies are willing to run it back. Because obviously this would have been for many people an absolute deal breaker and I know the PS5 is already selling like crazy and whatnot, mm -hmm. but this would have effectively killed the Series X in terms of being any competition to the PS5. I don't know if you agree with that or not. Uh, well, 
the series the series consoles in my opinion weren't that much competition yet but this wouldn't have helped for sure oh yeah i say to me this would have been the nail in the coffin and honestly we might not even see microsoft made consoles from this point onwards because it would have been a complete flop yeah so yeah uh and also it uh for the free to play game gamers on xbox good it's about it's about time when nintendo even got this right like free to play games are free to play you you know you fucked up and it's nintendo yeah. nintendo aren't very hip with the times when it comes to online stuff right <laughs> right yeah and i do feel i think they could have gotten away with a price increase just not a 200 percent price increase i think they could have gotten away with a 10 percent price increase maybe a 20 percent price increase across the board i am i don't know how you feel about that i said to me the whole thing was absolutely terrible it's great for them that they ran it back honestly mm -hmm. but overall just another stark reminder that we need to make sure that these companies are kept in check that we continue to voice our opinions and we don't just blindly buy their products and support them just because mm -hmm. so and uh, oh yeah uh to answer my question uh slay do you think uh they could have gotten away with a smaller price increase um honestly they probably could have mm -hmm. but like to me i just don't think that it would have been received positively even if it was like a five percent increase or something like that solely because then it's like well what are they offering mm -hmm. In exchange for charging you more. Yeah, but I just think, like, the fact they they did a super jump of, like, 200%, double the yeah, price. Yeah, and they didn't even mention any new services involved with it or <laughs> yeah. anything like that. It was just, nope, you're going to start paying more for what you've already been paying for. Yeah, yeah, so basically, more of the story is what, what Slate just said. So, so overall, next glad they ran it back. But anyway, let's move on to our next topic. All right, next up. Uh, so this one got quite a few gamers uh, angry, and and rightfully so. Uh, Vicarious Visions merged into Blizzard. Longtime Activision Publishing Studio will will be quote fully dedicated to Blizzard titles going forward. So, Vicarious Visions, the lovely people behind most recently the. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remakes and the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy are are getting absorbed into Blizzard. Oh, boy. So this is unfortunate because we don't know whether or not this means they won't be making any more modern Tony Hawk games or if we won't see any more Crash games. I know that Toys for Bob made Crash 4. It's about time, right? Yeah, they made that. Um, yeah, so I don't think we have to really worry about them making any more Crash games and whatnot. But in terms of the Tony Hawk games, which is, like, really hard to see, because I was hoping that the success of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 would have kind of kick-started a whole new generation of Tony Hawk games. Oh, oh, absolutely. Basically do a Crash, but with Tony Hawk. And I think it could have been somewhat successful. But unfortunately, with them being absorbed into Activision Blizzard, yeah. um, I don't think that'll be the case. And even if it is the case, we already know for a fact that Activision ran the first Tony Hawk series into the ground. Yeah. But they're like yearly releases. Basically, Tony Hawk back then is like what Call of Duty became now. Mm -hmm. Until it just stopped selling and the series was dead. Yeah. And I hope that isn't the fate for Tony Hawk. As I said, I'd love to see them continue to make more games. I don't necessarily think they have to remake, you know, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and 4 or other games. Mm -hmm. They could, like, make new Tony Hawk games or something, but either way, this isn't a great thing for gaming overall. Yeah. But, you know, it's just the nature of the business. It's things like this happen. Yeah. What else can you do? Yeah, uh, some more details as part of the move. Vicarious Visions studio head Jen O'Neill has been promoted to Blizzard Executive Vice President of Development, where she will join the company's leadership. Uh, O'Neill will be replacing... Uh, will be replaced in the Vicarious Visions studio head role by Simon Ebedger, who, who previously served as the COO for the studio. 
Uh, the studio will remain in uh, Albany, New York, which is about like a couple hours away from where I'm at. So yeah, sad, sad to see. Uh, I do think this will spell may probably the end of the Tony Hawk series, but if if that is the end, hell of a way to go out though with a fantastic remake of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Yeah, considering that like it was dead. I I didn't really see this as the end of the line series. I saw it as more of a resurgence for the series because really the series was already dead, right? Yeah, yeah, it was, it so, was like, it died it with Tony would, Hawk. Bro yeah, so died. it would suck to see this amazing resurgence for it to just be, like, a one-time thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would absolutely suck. But if it, unfortunately, ends, hell of a way to go out, though. Yeah, at, at the very least, it doesn't look like they're going to, if this is what happens and we don't get any more games, at least they're not running it into the ground again, I suppose. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's probably the, the best thing. Um, yeah, and that's kind of like the caveat of it is at least we don't see it destroyed a second time, right? right? Yeah. And uh, one more thing. After collaborating with Vicarious Visions and subtitles, developing a great relationship, Blizzard realized there was an opportunity for Vicarious Visions to provide long-term support, a representative explained to GameIndustry.biz. They declined to specify what the team has been working on with Blizzard or for how long. So who knows how long Vicarious Visions has been working with Blizzard on stuff. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of the Vicarious Visions uh, Blizzard uh, acquisition. For sure, for sure. Or merger, more so. Uh, so one last thing. We've covered this game before here on the show a time or two. Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> the game that barely runs on PlayStation 5. The game that somehow ran almost as well as, like, base PS4 on the Atari VCS. Thanks, Kevin Kenson. <laughs> but there are modding tools now. That's right. Uh, CD Projekt Red is basically like, Bethesda us, please. <laughs> and if you Actually, <laughs> like, that's exactly what I was thinking when they announced that there's going to be modding tools made available. Yes. For me... Bethesda has always been the poster child of uh, having friendly modding support. Yes. And I don't know whether to chalk that up to, well, their games are usually a complete glitchy mess when they come out mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. But uh, this seems to be like a very similar approach to that same problem overall. Yeah. Uh, Outside of, you know, refunding literally everyone who made the purchase of the game or whatever. Yeah. They're trying to do enough in-game goodwill things. Yes. But ultimately, none of this is going to fix any ill will that their consumers have towards them now. Mm -hmm. They hyped up a game that wasn't even like 10 to 20% completed. <laughs> and... <laughs> Borderline unplayable on the previous gen consoles. Yeah. I still don't think it's very good on current consoles and it's acceptable on PC, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, actually, they I'm, still haven't yeah. fixed everything that's wrong with the game. There's yeah. still patches being rolled out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and it, it's just really unfortunate that Cyberpunk ended up being as bad as it did. But, yeah. Yeah, for, you know, I still think the idea of modding support is pretty cool regardless. Yeah, yeah. I've heard Cyberpunk runs great on PC from a buddy of mine. Uh, I've actually heard it runs surprisingly well on Stadia, of all of all services. Uh, but yeah, uh, so being released is the metadata, the archive dump, the tweak dump, and the tweak uh, database IDs. So base, uh, yeah, uh, below you will find official tools and resources that will help you modify and create your own experiences in the world of Cyberpunk 2077. Tools will be continuously updated alongside with game patches to ensure compatibility before diving in. Before downloading and diving in, please make sure to read the license agreement, blah, 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 blah. So I am definitely going to be interested in the videos that YouTubers make the of some of the insane mods uh it'll be very interesting to see what people create because i half expect some of the blizzard some of the uh, no, not blizzard uh the bethesda modders to hop on over to cyberpunk 2077 
I don't know if you agree with that, Slade, but I, I expect some of the Bethesda modders to pop on over. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Alrighty. Well, let me fill you in, ladies and gentlemen, on what has been the biggest ga news in not only gaming, but the goddamn world right now. The GameStop stock friends. AKA, oh boy. <laughs> AKA how a bunch of Redditors made GameStop's stock soar, much to the chagrin of the hedge funds attempting to short it and slayed. You did more research on this than I have because I basically did the other topics. Explain yeah, the lovely So, uh, let's go ahead and go over this. First of all, I got a uh, nice little visual presentation I'm going to give you guys. It's Super professional. I'm sure you all love it. Oh, so, Byron, if you want to go ahead and put that up on the screen, if you haven't already. It is up on the um, screen. Oh, Lord. <laughs> all right. Oh, so, Lord. Um, basically, what happened is a company called Melvin Corporation. Um, they are a hedge fund studio. Basically, what they do, they have like $12 billion to so them, or they did, I should say. So basically what they do is they go to these companies that are struggling and whatnot, and they do the, they do this thing called, uh, shorts. So basically what they do is, uh, they basically borrow shares from somebody and then sell them. So the reason they do this is because they have to give the share back to who they borrowed it from. So they sell them. So that the company's uh, price for their shares go down. Mm. Then they buy them back and give the share back to who they borrowed it from. Along with, you know, an interest fee or whatever. And the difference between how much they sold it for versus how much they bought it back for is what they get to keep. So to make a long story short, they basically bet on these companies to fail. So they are pretty scummy. In practice, they don't care whether or not these companies lose, have employees that lose their jobs or anything like that. All they care about is making that big money. That's all they care about, right? Yeah. So this is where things get interesting. So the guy is here at Reddit, absolute fucking monkeys. Um. They are called Wall Street Bets, right? Yes. So some brilliant son of a bitch, and this is his name, and I quote his Reddit name, you slash deep fucking value. Oh, yes, that guy. Yep. About I'm a year and a half ago in 2019, he made a bet on GameStop okay. when it was at $3 per share. What? Wait, wait. Three fucking dollars? Holy shit. So three dollars per share, $3? right? Three dollars? Three dollars per share. Holy shit. So, basically, this brilliant son of a bitch made a prediction. He saw that GameStop was being heavily shorted, mm -hmm. and he thought there's going to be value in the company, primarily because the next-gen consoles were coming out, right? Uh, yeah. So, and, yeah. he put in 50000 Dollars, so like hella zeros, hella zeros, right? Yeah, uh, fifty thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah, fifty thousand dollars. We're gonna go ahead and clear a lot of this out. All right. So he made this bet, and fast forward to a year and a half later, mm -hmm. GameStop by these crooks over here was being shorted at one hundred and fifty percent of their total stocks. Okay, meaning this is more stocks. Then GameStop owns. Okay, may I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, slash make a statement. How the fuck can, is that even possible? How can you short something? Byron, that is an excellent question more than that no one is able to answer. Like, okay, because like... It I should be illegal to short a company for more than 150% of what they're worth. It should. Or all of their stocks. It, it when should. they short 150% of their stocks, that's more stocks than this company has, right? Yeah, yeah, it should be illegal to short them by anything more than 100%. Yeah. So, oh, Lord. these greedy sons of bitches did it, right? Mm -hmm. So, these, you know, kids on Wall Street Bets, they call themselves a bunch of autists. I think that's actually 
pretty fairly accurate for the most part. Um, they saw that this company was being shorted 150%. So in the act of shorting, they drive the stock price way down, right? They drive the stock price way down. Yeah. So let's say it was at $19 when they decided they were going to short the company. Mm -hmm. And it drops to $2, right? Okay, yeah. That's where this company decides to step in, buy them back. They make a $17 profit per share. Yeah, yeah. Basically the buy low, sell high mentality. Yes. And then they give the stocks back to who they borrowed it from while keeping the profit there. Mm -hmm. These okay. brilliant sons of bitches decided, okay, well, we see this company is being shorted 150% here. Mm -hmm. So they decided to buy before these crooks could mm -hmm. so they bought it and drove the price up to like 60 dollars at first something like that it was like 60 to 50 or whatever huh, yeah 60 dollars the the price of yeah well, actually the price so of they last bought it, and these guys <laughs> haven't bought their stocks back now okay. because these guys haven't bought their stocks back they're fucking in tears right now they're like oh okay they're not in tears they're like oh shit they're like, oh shit. Because now, even though they sold these stocks at like $19, it now costs $60 to get back. So they're going to lose money, right? Yes. Yeah. These Wall Street monkeys, they know this. Mm -hmm. They know this. So instead of selling back the stocks and making their profit, they're holding them. Okay. So they're holding them and continuing to buy. Mm -hmm. So hold buy. So what does this do? So now this $60 over the span of a week is now at $320 per stock. <laughs> so this is crazy, right? Yeah, this it's is fucking crazy. insane. Yeah, it's nuts. So now this company right here is Omega fucked. They are super fucked because yeah. they put like $2.5 billion in Citadel or oh, Citadel gave them another $2.5 billion, so they're $12.5 billion in the hole, Holy which is more than what their company's worth, right? Yeah. So they would be bankrupted if the stocks were only $175, give or take. Mm -hmm. That would bankrupt that company. Oh, my God. The stocks are now worth nearly twice that. Oh <laughs> so when I, when these guys are fucked, they're, like, super fucked. So. The moral of the story is don't be greedy. Don't try to bankrupt businesses for your own gain. And more importantly, if you see these and you could collaborate a movement, if you punish these companies for doing this, mm -hmm. massive profits, massive profits, right? Yeah. So obviously it's quite a bit more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. Um, there's some other things that happened, like Robin Hood, for instance, started limiting people from buying shares oh, yes. on their platform, actually, but allowing them to sell it, which was really scummy. Yeah, actually, but it's not as scummy as most people make it out to be. Mm -hmm. The thing is, Robin Hood doesn't have the liquidity to really pay out everybody who's going to sell these stocks when these numbers drive up. Yeah. And by the way, this 320 is not the end. Mm -hmm. These bitches have not bought out their shares yet. Mm -hmm. 320 is where it's at now. When these guys are forced to buy back their shares, this could be anywhere from a thousand dollars per stock mm -hmm. to even ten thousand dollars per stock, okay. right? Yeah. Something crazy ridiculous. Yeah, uh, I uh, I'm going to switch over because you mentioned it earlier. Uh, Robin Hood, uh, which is uh, explain r what Robin Hood is for those who don't know what it is. Okay. So Robinhood is a free app that you can download on your phone or use on your computer where um, they're a stockbroker. So you could go on their app. They've basically dumbified, you know, the market really easily. Kind of looks like a bit of like a childish video game, right? Mm -hmm. So they make it really easy to, you know, read into stocks and whatnot, buy, acquire stocks. Yeah. Um, obviously, you can only have three-day trades in a week, mm -hmm. but... I digress. They've made it, they basically made it more accessible to the average consumer. But yeah. because it's free, what they do to make their money is they sell that information of what stocks are average people buying, what stocks are people selling. 
Mm. And they give that information to Citadel and other people who pay them money so that Citadel gets this information and they can buy and sell stocks ahead of what people using the Robinhood app are. Okay, yeah. Whether that's legal or not, that's also questionable. Mm -hmm. But regardless, the crooks at Wall Street pretty much get away with it because... The government isn't going to hold them accountable because obviously a lot of those crooks in the government are bought out by a lot of these billionaires. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The so, circle of corruption goes on and on. So, right? yeah. Uh, Robin Hood put out this statement uh, a couple of days ago saying, yeah, we're continuously monitoring the market. Uh, in light of recent volatility, we're restricting transactions for certain uh, securities to position closing only, including uh, some other companies and dollar sign GME. And guess what dollar sign GME is? That's the GameStop. That is what we here on this podcast care about. AMC, some of these other companies, like, yeah, they're tech companies, but like we're a gaming show. That's well, generally thing about, what we uh, care yeah, about. Yeah, obviously GameStop's where we're most invested, but AMC yeah. is another company that's heavily shorted by crooks so mm -hmm. but that that, like, that that's for a different day this goes on and on so um so basically robin hood you know they started limiting people's pur purchases mm -hmm. or outright not allowing people to purchase more stocks yeah. um they were not honest about it. they said oh well we're just trying to protect our users and blah 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 because these stocks are highly volatile mm -hmm. that is a load of absolute bs and the way people interpret it is citadel pays Robin Hood, roughly 40% of what they're worth, right? Yeah. Probably more, mm -hmm. if we're being honest. Yeah. So if Citadel and Melvin Court, they go under, Robin Hood is fucked, right? So yeah. obviously they don't want their customers contributing to fucking them. So mm -hmm. yeah. they're restricting people from buying, which, once again, that's highly illegal or should be highly illegal. Yeah. But that isn't, that, that's not stopping these crooks. Like I said, all of these people in Wall Street, they're all crooks. Mm -hmm. So, yes, is the stock market being absolutely volatile right now? I'm not going to deny that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to deny that this is going to have a lot of implications on people. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that everybody who's buying stocks into GameStop is going to come out and profit from this or whatever. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would argue 99% of people involved are going to lose out. That's just the nature of how things are. Yeah. The only difference is that 1% of billionaires and whatnot who are used to winning out are also included on that number that's going to lose out this time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for and, a lot of these people, yeah. the funds that they're using to buy these stocks, they're, throw, they're either from the $600 stimulus checks or it's throwaway money that they don't need to live their lives. But basically, everybody involved in buying GameStop stocks all collectively want to see billionaires crumble. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so we've been taking advantage of us for God knows how long. Those crooks got away with the 2008 depression. Nobody was held accountable. It feels like this is finally our chance to hold those crooks accountable. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, may so I have some details on uh, the funny people over at Wall our Wall Street bets. So their subreddit got had a little bit of controversy. So for a little bit of time on the 27th. Uh, our Wall Street bets was closed to a invite only. Yes. Uh, and then our Wall Street bets uh, made made some statements, and I will uh, get to that. Yeah, they made their statement. Where do they go from here? Uh, yeah, there was a Twitter account for Wall Street bet mod. Uh, blah blah blah. They're basically gonna continue. Apparently, they also had their Discord server. Shut down. Discord shut down our Wall Street Bets server for quote unquote hate speech, glorifying violence, and spreading misinformation. Discord made a statement saying, Sir, the server has been on our trust community team's radar for some time due to occasional content violates. We had a guideline say we decided to move the server from Discord. To be clear, we did not ban the server due to the financial fraud related to GameStop. Or other stocks, Discord welcomes a broad variety of personal finance discussions from investment clubs and day traders to college students and professional financial advisors, blah, blah, blah. I think that's bullshit, but whatever. Oh, okay, so let's talk about the Discord situation, and then I'll talk about the Reddit situation afterwards. Mm -hmm. So basically, Discord was like, these guys are, you know, throwing hate speech around everywhere. And to be fair, 
I will say Wall Street Bets kind of throws around the word, re- word retard quite yeah. a bit loosely. Yeah. But they direct it towards themselves. So it's like, is it really hate speech, though? Uh, but yeah, self-deprecating. Yeah, self-deprecating humor. Yeah, it's it, they're very self-deprecating. Mm-hmm. So regardless of that, this is absolute BS because they've never policed shit like this on their platform before. Mm-hmm. They're doing it because they're also owned by these billionaires and whatnot. And they're trying to slow down these these monkeys at Wall Street Bets from continuously buying these stocks out and whatnot. And a- they're probably going to do everything they can to impede their progress. That's a- essentially what this comes down to. A second Discord server has been made with a new owner currently at 20k users and climbing a Discord sp- spokesperson tells me they are monitoring this new server for potential TOS violations. And apparently... It's already been over 60,000 members. So it, it grew more by the time Slasher posted this. It went from 20K to 60 to over 60K already. Oh, yeah. And that's nothing compared to their numbers on Discord. So when or uh, their numbers on Reddit. So yeah. let's talk about their Reddit situation. So that was taken down because there's an alarming number of bots joining trying to convince people to sell their GameStop stocks or to buy in other well, stocks. Well, well, not, not the, well, it was locked. And it was locked, not deleted. It was locked. Yeah, it was not deleted. It was locked. Yes. So Correct. they briefly, you know, locked it so people can come in, post, come in, or read or anything. Because at that point, it was very clear that the bots were trying to manipulate people into selling their GameStop stocks, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. at that point, they reached out to the Reddit admins to get additional help, have their own bot, you know, clean up posts and whatnot. Mm. And essentially they were able to reopen. They asked for more people to volunteer to be mods and stuff like that. Yeah. But to make a long story short, um, the people at Reddit, especially the mods of wall street bets, they are working very hard to keep this ship going. Mm -hmm. So if you're a part of that, thank them for what they do Mm -hmm. it's an un they don't get paid for it and what they do is extremely difficult yeah well well because on reddit i i believe it is illegal to have paid mods i believe yeah i'm not 1000 percent sure but i believe if it's like any other service that has a user moderation it is illegal to pay mods which all i kind of think that's a little bs Honestly, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, that's a that's a different conversation. But so, I also think that Twitch mods and like Reddit mods and all that should typically, if they want to do it to help like somebody, so, so they, they should be paid for. They should be paid for. So, like, uh, th- there's there's also something you should you should probably tell uh, the audience oh, yeah. here. So let's talk about the numbers of members Wall Street Bets had before this fiasco and after. So before this fiasco, I think they had like what six hundred thousand, close I, to a million people. I got, I got no in there. clue. I got no clue. I assume they have okay, over okay. a million. I, 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 assume, I assume they have over a million now. Oh, Byron! Oh, a million, putting it lightly. Okay, so they went from roughly six hundred thousand people to six point two million members. Think about that for a minute. So they six point two million. Wait, so did they? grow by like it seems odd but i think like is it 600 percent? that's I yes don't... yes that's how many members they gained during this whole fiasco <sighs> and i want to make one thing perfectly clear wall street bets are not people who invest wisely smartly or anything like that they gamble on the stock market there what? are multiple videos and posts that you could go look up of people yodeling everything they have and to the absolute dumbest ideas and losing porn, they call it lost porn, mm-hmm. right? They call it lost porn. And a lot of them get off on that, honestly. But uh, you have those, you know, occasional, you know, success stories where somebody yellows into something and it, like, pans out. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, oh, yeah. So I did the math. Uh, they incre- that, that subreddit increased its membership by over 1,100%. Yeah. That is nuts. For a well, and the thing is, Wall Street Bets is a group of gamblers that unintentionally became a movement against billionaires. Mm-hmm. And they, I, I guarantee you, like the members who were 
there before as well as the, the moderators. Yeah. They don't consider themselves as part of a movement. Mm-hmm. They say they like the stock. It's because they do. It's because they legitimately do. They all bought in because they saw the success that deep fucking value had. <laughs> and most of those people followed suit. Yeah. It got out to the mainstream. So everybody started getting in on it. But uh, to make a long story short, these people aren't necessarily heroes or anything like that. They just exposed how shitty billionaires are mm-hmm. to the main public sphere. So the one thing about this that's great is now their corruption is basically completely out there in plain sight to see. They, they're not, there's no cover up going on. There's no hiding it. Everybody sees the situation for exactly what it is. Yeah. Uh, isn't there something else you should also tell our audience that you have uh, delved into? Oh, okay. So uh, to go into a little bit more details on this, yes, I did buy some GameStop stocks. I own three shares to be exact. I bought in around that 175 price range. So What um, the fuck? Yeah, I'm sitting pretty... Oh. Right now, I as I said, I only have three shares, so it's only I, I haven't made that much money yet. But oh, Lord. regardless, I think it's really cool. Regardless of whether, and it's all disposable income to me, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's it's your I didn't money, like my life savings or anything crazy like that. Yeah, but, like uh, like and and to to tell everybody, I have zero GameStop stock because I don't because yeah. I, I don't got fucking money right now. <laughs> yeah, I heard about it. I got it on the bandwagon. I'm here more for the movement than to make money. So uh, this I could it could ride to ten thousand dollars or it could ride to zero dollars. I got diamond hands. I'm holding either oh, way, oh baby. Let's go. How, how long? But, uh, now, 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 this, I think this is about to turn into a Q&A real quick. How long are you fucking holding? How long are you planning to hold for? As oh, long as God. it takes for that squeeze to start happening. Oh, as long as it takes. Oh, like, I don't care if, uh, you know, I said the drop on, uh, I think it was Wednesday. No, it was Thursday. Mm-hmm. was kind of scary because yeah. it dropped all the way down to 126. You should but, have, you should have you bought know, around then. Yeah, I, I wish I did, honestly. If Robinhood didn't limit like purchases, I would have bought like ten more. Like uh, trust me. That, 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 that's that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Now, 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 now I'm working on by the way, I'm also working on transferring my accounts and funds out of Robinhood. Yeah. It's it's a multiple day process. Yeah. Like yeah. through uh, Robinhood. You you did make a great point. Uh Slayton, I think uh this will this will be uh my last point and I'll let you carry on but uh the stock market is basically gambling it is legalized uh gambling and uh you know what gamestop is a headline topic in 2021 which is unfucking believable you look at the state of gamestop heading into the next generation of consoles it wasn't looking good because like the, there were the digital edition consoles digital sales were going through the roof compared to physical sales and i assume uh this has happened in your local game stops but every time i pass by uh my local one uh it's it looks more like a like pop culture store than a game store yeah well, let's talk about game stuff specifically while we're talking about it because yeah. uh i think it's something we could expand more on this does not mean that GameStop is a thriving business by any means. Oh. Yeah, they're now a oh. multi-billion dollar company out of fucking oh, like, nowhere, right? Like, the stock market really doesn't determine the actual value yeah. of a company. GameStop is still struggling. They're a brick-and-mortar store in middle of a pandemic where more and more people are buying online. Yeah. Um, this does not mean GameStop is successful by any, you know... Stretch of the imagination. Exactly. So, but regardless of that, there is some things that cause GameStop to see more value. So the CEO, or not CEO, the one of the top investors of Chewy, yeah. where Chewy took off to the stratosphere yeah, last che- year, yeah, year Chewy, before, Chewy. right? Chewy.com, uh, which is, I think, what, a dog store? Site? Yeah, I forget his name. I think it's like Ryan Cohen or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. He invested into GameStop stocks himself and joined their board of directors mm-hmm. and basically spent 
a solid month ripping everybody there for not investing into, you know, digital practices and stuff like that. And that actually caused the stock initially to rise from that $3 price range of last April to like 20 to even $40 because people believe in this man's leadership. Because after all, he led the rise of Chewy. He could v- becoming a more online selling, you know, dog food company, right? Yeah. So there's no reason to believe he couldn't do that with GameStop. So there is an avenue for success for GameStop. Mm-hmm. That's possible. I don't think that's going to be mm-hmm. apparent in the short term, not even close. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah. sure when they post their um, their finances and their uh, mm-hmm. oh yeah, and they got their, their uh, quarterly um, earnings. Yeah, quarterly earnings. They're going to be very piss poor, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, and they have a new like board coming on, uh, which also includes former uh, NOA head Reggie. Yes. So basically. GameStop is more something you're looking at in the long term rather than the short term. Because the short in the short term, they're flopping. They're terrible. They're ridiculous. That's not changing anytime soon. Mm-hmm. But GameStop could reinvent itself as a place where it's competitive with, you know, Steam or the Epic Game Stores or something like that. That could very well be feasible and possible. After all, if this man was able to turn dog food into a great online community that you can find just imagine what he could do with video games right Mm -hmm. so there is some reason for optimism about gamestop so anybody saying that oh well this stock should be absolutely worthless i don't necessarily agree with that assessment overall and i would argue that the whole situation with this guy you know joining the board and whatnot is the re is the initial reason gamestop stock started rising quite a bit Mm -hmm. obviously the whole Reddit situation is what kicked it off into the stratosphere. Yeah. No one's denying that. Yeah. But um. there is real reason for optimism involving GameStop. And this company, Melvin Corp and Citadel, were trying to destroy that mm-hmm. and get 60,000 GameStop employees out of work. Yeah. And to me, that's that's scummy. Right, that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Scary. Like, like as much as GameStop is an awful corporation for the things they have done, the the TikTok stuff, the and and some of the other employee stuff they they have done. Like, Sixty thousand people don't deserve to lose their jobs over this. All over this particular thing, like if GameStop so that does, these crooked billionaires could go make more billions. Yeah, like if GameStop else. like kills itself, then then it's just like oh, GameStop killed it. Yeah, that is what it is. But the main thing is you do not short 150% of a company's total stocks unless you're trying to drive them into the ground. You just don't do that. Well, uh, and, and GameStop was was already close to that, as as said in your little Microsoft uh, point presentation thing. Could go out of business, but I don't want it. Yeah, to go I, out, I don't want it to go out of business because of this i if it's going to go out of business let gamestop kill itself or 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 let it thrive and don't get me wrong i don't think that this situation or the wall street bets members have quote unquote saved gamestop yeah maybe they saved them from Melvin corp and these very very corrupt billionaires and whatnot yeah but they but gamestop still has to find a way to sell their products and thrive as a company and they have not done that yeah gamestop so... needs to be saved partially from itself i, I guess and as i said there is a real belief that i think ryan cohen i think ryan cohen's his name i need to honestly educate myself that on a bit more let me look it up you keep talking can, can uh Okay, yeah, it is Ryan Cohen. It okay. is Ryan Cohen. Okay. There is a real belief that that man can definitely turn around GameStop. Mm-hmm. There is a real be- belief that he could pull it off, right? Yeah. So, to summarize this whole thing, um, we don't know when the uh, short squeeze... Oh, yeah, I haven't explained what a short squeeze is. Oh, yeah. It, so, it, it, ex- I'm surprised you didn't earlier. <laughs> yeah, so you know how I said that Wall Street Bets kind of bought in to the stock, the GameStop stocks when they were low while these guys were shorting them? Mm-hmm. So basically, a short squeeze is when these guys buy in and they prevent the uh, company shorting them yeah. from rebuying at low prices. So what happens is... 
These guys end up having to pay the difference, which drives those stocks up even more. That's called a short squeeze. Yeah. So, okay. So, let's wrap this up. Um, yeah. Ooh, Lord. Essentially, we are not financial advisors. No, do, do not take... And I'll, I will say this right now. Do not take any of Slade's financial advice with... Yeah, I'm with, not an advisor. Yeah. I'm a moron. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah, and I, I, I just have diamond hands and I'm holding the line. Yeah, That's and all I, you need to know. And I'm, just, and I'm just here to be like, hey, I'm giving my thoughts. I'm not here to give financial advice. I'm, I'm here to talk talk shop yeah, about the world again. That's literally called who the hell asked. <laughs> Nobody cares about our opinions. Keep it that way. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyways, uh, this was a really good podcast, Byron. Um, oh, my God. I had a lot of fun today. So there, uh, Yeah, you, you, got to, you got to do some drawing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, like, uh, yeah, and Slade set this up before we started recording. So you, you can thank him for, for this artistry that you are currently yeah, seeing on the screen. And, work of yeah, and have seen for the past, like, 10 minutes or so but yeah thank you everybody for watching hit the subscribe button if you haven't like the video if you liked it dislike it if you disliked it leave a comment down below on your thoughts on all of these situations the gamestop stock cyberpunk 2077 mod tools uh vicarious visions being absorbed into blizzard or the xbox live gold situation click the links down below for links to all the topics uh, and sources that we have uh, shown on screen and our social media links are down below. This has been Byron and, and this has been Slade. And we will see you next week for hopefully a somewhat more normal-ish episode. <laughs> Until then, see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.